Today, we're going to learn to use Python to write a simple dead man switch that will encrypt a file if we don't check in on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. A dead man switch is a fairly simple concept. If you don't do something by a certain period of time, then something happens. And it's basically meant for a scenario where, let's say you're going to a protest and you might be arrested and you want to make sure that your laptop is locked down if you don't check in via Twitter over a certain period of time. Now, another scenario could be you actually die and want to make sure some embarrassing files are encrypted before anyone gets to your computer. All these are perfect examples of why a dead man switch might be useful. Now, today we're going to make a simple one in Python 3, and that's really all you need in order to follow along with this guide. But if you get confused, you can always check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description for any troubleshooting you might need. Once you have Python 3 installed on your computer, then we can get started. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at a dead man switch that I wrote in Python 3. And we're going to be using the PyCharm IDE in order to do this, although you can use any Python 3 IDE that you're comfortable with. Although I like this one in particular because it is free, and if you're a student, you can get the professional version also for free. Now, in order to understand how this will work, you can take a look at the top and see that there's a couple libraries that we'll be depending on. And there are some standard ones like time and date time that will allow us to do timing and parsing of various formats like dates. But there's also a couple non-standard libraries like twint and pyaes crypt, and those are important to understand because they're key to our project. Now let's take a look at what those libraries actually do. Here we have Twint, and Twint is a scraping tool that allows us to interact with Twitter in a number of interesting ways by doing specific searches, looking for a topic or a particular user's tweets. And in this case, we're going to use it as the mechanism for our dead man switch. Now Twint has a pretty good uh, wiki that has good documentation for how to use this tool. So if you want to get started with all these scraping functions and learn about all the different things you can do in order to scrape from Twitter, then this is a great place to get started. And as soon as we have installed Twint, then we can go ahead and actually use this in our Python code to build something useful around it. And if you want to learn more about Twint, you can also check out the Nullbyte episode that features Twint as a standalone tool. Now, in addition to this, we're using pyaescrypt. And pyaescrypt is something that allows us to very, very quickly encrypt a file and decrypt a file, which is our payload in this case, which we'll be using to encrypt a file with a password in the event that we don't check in. Now, the concept for this is actually one that was created by one of our production assistants. So a shout out to Eric for the idea for this episode. And what he wanted to do was see if we could make a dead man switch in Python 3. And while the original idea was to maybe upload a file that's encrypted and then automatically send out a tweet with the key, I decided to make it a little bit different because after investigating, I found that it's pretty annoying to actually set up a developer account with Twitter in order to get access to an API key. So keep that in mind that if you want to make a tweet, it's going to be a little bit of extra work. So let's get started and take a look at what it takes to do this. If you want to do this via a pip install, you can always do that as we covered in our other episode on Twint. But if you want to do this the manual way, you can click on the project interpreter settings, uh, go to the project interpreter, and you should be able to manually install it by selecting a interpreter and then clicking on the plus button. And this will give you the ability to add whatever packages you need, such as Twint. Here you can see you'll just select it and then you can click on install package in order to make sure that it is properly installed in your repository. Now I can also do the same with PyAES, but it should already be installed. And as you can see, that was a pretty painless process. So if you don't want to mess with pip in order to do your install, you can go ahead and do that here. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit apply and OK. And now we should be ready to start writing our code. And in general, the idea for this code is we want to be able to make sure that we can, over a certain period of time, either check in or not check in, and then have a file be encrypted based on the outcome of that exchange. So first, we need to decide what kind of key we're looking for. So this is going to be what code phrase we're using to basically disarm this and say, hey, I'm still here. I'm checking in. 
please don't encrypt my files. And we also need to define a couple other variables in order to make this work. So we've basically broken this up into three different functions. We have our payload, that's the thing that's gonna happen if we don't check in. We have our checking function, which is going to continuously check and see whether or not we've used the uh, key phrase on our Twitter. And then we have the targeting function, which is going to get all the information in order to make this run. So you can see our program is actually a single function, which then calls all the other functions to make it work. And if you want to go through this line by line, you can also go to my GitHub, github.com slash skakar, and look at the dead man switch project, and you can follow all of the various code right here. And of course, this is also available in the null byte article. Now taking a look at what happens when we call git targets, First, we create this function here, and we create a twint object, which is basically what we put all the configuration, uh, all the configuration items we want to run a search on. So this could be a username, this could be the date and time we want to start the search. So we're basically excluding everything that person has tweeted from before that, which is really important if we don't want to cause a false positive. Because if we basically search a user's entire timeline, they might have accidentally used that tweet, that code phrase sometime in the past if they tweet a lot. So making sure that we are including details like when to start the search is really important when we're building this object. So first we create this C twint object, and then we also need to ask the user with this input, hey, uh, what date do we actually start searching from? So that's usually today's date. And this is going to exclude anything that happened before. So we also want to make sure that they put it in the correct date because Twint is very strict about this. So if they don't put it in as year, month, day, then we're going to use the daytime library to try and see if this works, basically checking to see if it is actually the correct format. And if we get an error, we get a value error for that. Uh, if it runs and it doesn't work, then we'll say, hey, that's not a date. Go ahead and try again and just give them a, a little cheat sheet as to how it's supposed to be formatted. And then we just call get targets. We call this own function again. So basically what happens here is we ask them, hey, when do we start watching this Twitter account? If they give us the wrong format, we say, hey, that's wrong. And we bounce them back to the start. Okay, nice and easy. I'll just make a little note that this is for making sure the format is correct for the date. Now, we want to go ahead and set that as c.since. So basically when to search since. Uh, is now equal to that start time that we've had the user provide. And uh, next up, we're going to ask them the key phrase to disarm the switch. So what are we looking for? What phrase are we going to use to say, hey, I'm checking in, go ahead and disarm yourself. There's no need to encrypt this file. We'll also need to input the Twitter account that we want to watch, which is the c.username to watch. And then we'll also need to specify how long we want to wait in between check-ins to see if a tweet has been posted. So this could be as long as a day, or it could be as short as one minute, but this is read in minutes. So we're basically going to be supplying in minutes the amount of time we want to wait before encrypting this file. Now we also want to include the file path of the file to encrypt if the switch is fired. So if the time elapses that we are setting, then we'll go ahead and use this file path to point to what we want to encrypt. And of course, if you wanted to modify this, you could also make it maybe encrypt an entire directory or the whole computer instead. Now here we need a password to encrypt the file with. Of course, you probably want to get those back at some point. So a long secure password you don't use anywhere else is good to put in here. And then we'll need to set the target time. So how many minutes to run before we are firing the switch and encrypting the file. And that again could be one minute or it could be a couple of days. It's really up to you. Now to make this work, we have to also say that we are comparing the current time uh, plus the target time. And then we're multiplying that target time by 60 so to get the number of minutes. So basically what we're saying is when it hits this time, the current time plus the target time that we're telling it to run for, then we're going to go ahead and encrypt the file. So this is where in our code, we're setting ourselves up for a kind of um, checkpoint so that if we reach the time, that's basically the current time in minutes, or actually I think it's in seconds since the beginning of uh, computer time, then uh, plus the amount of time that we're waiting for, then we should be able to know exactly when it's the right time to encrypt the file if we haven't heard from our user that's supposed to be checking in on Twitter. Now here we're going to set two different variables which will tell Twint that we want to store this object. And finally, we go ahead and call our next function, which is to check. So our check key function is going to continuously check for this disarming key on the Twitter user that we selected. 
ever since the time that we specified. And we need to pass a couple things over to the check key function in order for it to work. We need to pass the C object that we just created. So this is the uh, basically the twint object we're going to search that we've added all these great details to. We're going to specify the delay time, so how long in between different checks. We're going to select the file path and the encryption password for the file uh, that's going to get encrypted, and then the target time for when we're actually going to go ahead and encrypt the file. So that calls this function up here, check key. So what check key does is it goes ahead and tries to run a twint search. And if something goes wrong, then it just says something bad's happened. Generally, this is just a catch all. I put this in to make sure that if uh, something were to go wrong, I could catch it if it happened at this point. But generally, the thing that goes wrong here is somebody puts in the date wrong. So I went ahead and added some validation down here to make sure that this pretty much never happens anymore. Now we're going to create a list and call it tweets. And we're going to use the tweet twint.output tweets list function in order to dump all the tweets that we found into this list. Now this list called tweets is really important because our whole program is going to be watching this list to see if anything gets put in it. What's happening here is we're running a search on Twitter. And if anything comes back that matches the values that we put into our C variable, then it's going to return and dump all of the tweets it finds in this list. So basically, if we get a match, then something gets put in this tweets list. So our next code just checks to see if anything's in there, because if it does have something in there, then we know that somebody has checked in, everything is fine, and we can go ahead and get rid of this. So we can see if there are no tweets in here, meaning no one's checked in yet, we check to see if the current time is equal to or greater than the time that is basically the time we set to encrypt the files. And if it is, then we go ahead and fire our payload. And we of course need to supply the file to encrypt and the password to encrypt it with. Now, otherwise, if there's nothing in our list, which should be the case in the event that, you know, no one has uh, checked in yet, then uh, we can go ahead and set a delay of however long we said to wait before checking in again. And then it'll go ahead and check the key all over again by just calling the function and starting back at the top. Now, if there is something in the list, then instead we'll get this statement. And what this statement says is that the deadman switch has been deactivated and we have entered safe mode. So at that point, the system will exit and the program will complete. So once we start this, our program will ask us for all the information necessary. It'll then continuously check to see if the tweet has been tweeted that will disarm the system. And if the period of time elapses that we've set in minutes before somebody tweets and disarms the system, it will go ahead and encrypt using this payload here, which basically just says we're going to use pi AES, AES crypt to set a buffer size for the encryption. We give the file path for it to be encrypted, and then we basically tell it to go ahead and notify the user that the switch has been activated and that their data has been encrypted. Now I've commented out these two lines that will actually go ahead and either decrypt the data or delete the original file. So if you really wanted to make this secure, then you would need to import an additional module, the secure delete module, and make sure that you're deleting the original file after you encrypt it. Now, I'm not going to enable that on this particular prototype because I don't want you to accidentally delete your sensitive files if you run this and it just goes off. So in the future, if you want to make this live and actually make sure to delete or securely delete the file that you're looking to make the deadman switch be focused around, this is the line of code that you would want to modify. All right, so now that we have all that together, let's go ahead and test this out and see what happens. All right, so our code is running and now it's going to start asking us questions in order to work. So let's start by just messing up and seeing if our validation is working. So if I go ahead and give it a wrong date, you can see that it knows that's not a real date and it needs us to try again. So let's go ahead and supply a validate and see if it's able to continue. All right, now we need the key phrase to disarm the switch. Twitter account to watch. And then the time in seconds to wait before checking the account. Now, we'll need to supply a file to encrypt for if the switch fires. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this one that is just a text file that has a couple of lines of text, and I'll use this as the file path for our script. It'll need a password to encrypt the file. And after that, it'll want to know how many minutes to run before actually firing this. So before I do this, I also want to go to the folder that it's in and just confirm that the data is here and it is not encrypted. Now I'm gonna set this to run for one minute and there will be a couple little outputs like this, but as you can see, it was not able to find any tweets that are matching that. And now it will enter the loop where it continuously checks for one minute until eventually encrypting the file. 
there we go. As you can see, after 60 seconds, the payload was activated and our final payload code was uh, printed out here. If I go to the folder, you can see there is now an encrypted file that I cannot read. And while we didn't delete the original one, you can see that it would be very easy for us to make an encrypted version and get rid of it if this code was converted to include the line that I commented out. Now let's see if we can disarm this using the dead man switch. I'm going to run it again and let's see that if I can fire off a tweet in time to be able to disarm this and protect my file from being encrypted. So I'll also get rid of the encrypted version and see if we can do this quickly. So today I'm going to put the date, key phrase to disarm the switch, live demo time, Twitter account to watch, time and seconds to wait between checking the account, 10 seconds, file to encrypt if the switch fires, so I'll use the same one as before, password to encrypt the file, and then how many minutes to run before firing. I'll go ahead and give it two minutes. So as you can see, it's already not found any results, so I better run over and try to tweet something. All right, so I'm going to tweet out live demo time. I'll just copy that so I don't mess it up somehow. Disarming my Python script live demo time. And you can see it's going to wait and try again. There we go. Dead switch deactivated, entered safe mode. As you can see, we've been able to create a simple Python 3 dead man switch that actually works when we use Twitter as the mechanism to disarm it. Our Python program is a perfect example of a simple dead man switch. But if we want to put in the work, we can obviously make it a lot better if we really want to. Now I commented out the part that actually deletes the original file just to make sure we don't accidentally do that. But if we wanted to make this act a little bit more like a traditional dead man switch, we could encrypt a file in advance, upload it, and then just tweet out the password if something were to happen to us. Now, I didn't include this because Python is a little bit tricky with the way it interacts with Twitter, and you need to get an API key which requires approval, and that does take some time. So I wanted to make this a quick and easy example you could use without needing to go through the pain of getting a Twitter developer account. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and if you get confused, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description. If you have any ideas for upcoming episodes, send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.